Hello SPEDFORMS users, this is Diane McCarran, and today we're going to talk about SPEDFORMS 2.0 and the basics of SPEDFORMS 2.0. If you were a SPEDFORMS 1.0 user and are now switching, you will notice differences in how 2.0 looks and navigates, but rest assured 2.0 functions like 1.0, only better. You're going to log in the same way you have in the past, or if you're a new user, you're going to log in the way your district has described for you. Up here, you'll notice the name of the district site that you're using, your username, your password, and then the login. Below that, you see some browser setup instructions. We don't need to worry about those now, but you are going to want to follow them the first time you print a document. An important note with SPEDFORMS, just like with 1.0, never log into SPEDFORMS twice simultaneously using two different browser windows or two different devices because you risk losing your work. You can certainly use any of the top browser windows, just don't be in two of them at the same time for SPEDFORMS. You can also use multiple devices handheld devices, laptops, desktops, phones. Just don't be using two devices in SPEDFORMS at the same time. If you are making the switch to 2.0 and the district hasn't done that for you automatically, we'll take a couple minutes to go through that. You're going to find the educator setup. That's step one. Once you've clicked educator setup, the setup is going to open and it's going to show profile, goals, team member list, evaluation assessment tools, and credentials. And we're going to show you how to update a number of those. So go from setup to profile and let's switch to 2.0. When you open up your profile, you see uh, information, login information, contact information at the top. But then in the red circle, you see settings. Go ahead and toggle that switch from SPEDFORMS 1.0 to SPEDFORMS 2.0 and hit the Save button. And now you're in the newest version of SPEDFORMS. If you really, really must return to 1.0 later in the day or at a different time, you can again go to Educator Setup, go to Profile. This time you're finding that on the left hand side of the, your screen. Once you go to profile, you have again find settings. Again, there is that toggle switch and you can switch right back to 2.0 and hit the save button or right back to 1.0, hit the save button and you're back in the older version of SPEDFORMS. So now let's talk about more of your profile. We just changed the setting. Now let's look at the profile in total. So once you're there, you saw the settings screen there. Below the settings screen uh, where it says SPEDFORMS 2.0 in the version, I would encourage you to click the Show Save Warning and click the Keep the Hamburger Menu button open. The Show Save Warning will make sure that if you've just typed something and you're moving to a different page, you're going to get a reminder. If you haven't hit Save, it will remind you to do that. They keep the hamburger menu open. That is something that we'll learn more about later in our training, but you're probably going to want to click that now. Over on the right hand side in that red circle, you see the default landing page. You can choose to have it be your special ed dashboard. You can have it be the assessment tracker. You can have it be the administrative overview and other choices. You can change this as many times as you like. But go ahead and select your default landing page or the page that you open up to when you open up SPEDFORMS. At the top of the profile, there is more information, username, password, email. From this screen, you can edit all of that. And you really do want to make sure that your profile is 100% current. If you had a change in email from the last school year or you have a change in the phone number, or maybe you're in a new building, go ahead and update those changes. Again, making sure you hit that Save button in the upper right-hand corner. 
That email address really is important. If you forget your password over the summer, over, over a long break, a link can be resent to this email address to help you remember that password. If you enter your school phone number and school address, these will be displayed as your contact information on various forms that you send to parents. So make sure this, this information is accurate. If you serve a number of different schools, you only get to have one address and one set of phone numbers here. So make it the one where you receive your uh, voicemail and receive your postage. You can change your password. There are uh, rules about that. Note them here, a number of different characters and things. We take this very seriously. And so follow not only SpedForms guidelines, but district guidelines for your password. And one of the last things we want to talk about here is the print font size. That is set by SpedForms. We would say, please don't change this, as then your uh, pages won't look consistent. The print font size is determined by page, and it is determined to have the best looking uh, printing output at the time when you finish that. All right, the next thing under, under uh, Educator Setup, and we're going to talk about the team member list. This is an efficiency tool. It lets you create a list of team members that you frequently work with so that when you're putting information into a, few, a student's form, whether it be the um, team meeting notice or an IEP or an IFSP, there's no need to retype the names of all those team members that you meet with. It's really handy if there's names that are difficult to spell. It also allows you to add interagency colleagues, for example, people from Head Start or public or mental health or social services, so that again, you don't have to retype those names. You just hit a click and those names will be added to that form. There are two ways you can add and create your team member list. The first way is to just type information into the text field and click on the person icon is the second way. So type that information into the text field for people that are not already built in to your district. These might be people, as we said, from outside agencies. Now, if these are people that really already exist in your district, go ahead and click on that person icon. Then there will be a pop-up window and you'll get to select those names to add to your team member list. Your team member list will be at the top of the list and by clicking on their name once again that means it will be adding to your team member list you can also always edit or remove team members when that need arises when if you remove someone from your team member list it doesn't remove them from the global list just your list so if you're choosing somebody that's in your building go ahead and click on that person icon take click on the name and they will pop from the window with that from the global list to your team member list. And then, of course, you can edit them or remove them as needed. The final efficiency piece in your educator setup that we're going to talk about today is the eval and assessment tools. So that's the last piece of that list. So this is for your tools. S tools are stored quickly here. They're entered into the evaluation. And you, again, just like with the team member list, you don't need to retype. So go ahead, open that button or open that um, link. And then you can start by clicking the add evaluation and assessment. The districts um, already have evaluation assessment tools in there, and we have some built in there for you, but you can create your own custom list, which will be at the top, so that all of those things that you typically use, you'll easily be able to add to a prior written notice evaluation plan. So if you're wanting to select from SpedForms test, you can do there, but start by adding the plus button 
make a choice here for the evaluation area, make a choice for the evaluator. This is a title, not a name. And then the name or and or description of the evaluation assessment tool that you're adding. Once that's done, make sure you hit the save button and you will have that list that is easily then added to your prior written notice and evaluation plan. All right, we're going to talk about some very basics with SPED forms. And we're going to start with accessibility. SPED forms can be accessed anywhere there is internet. We can use Windows desktops and laptops, Mac desktops and laptops, Chromebooks, tablets, smartphones, iPads, all of the above. But as we said earlier, only use one at a time but you can certainly use the, the laptops or the Chromebooks or the iPads or your phones when you're out doing home visits, whereas maybe you're in your office and you've got a desktop, or maybe you have a desktop at home. All of those are available wherever there is internet. SpedForms is optimized to work with the following browsers, Chrome, Firefox, Edge and Explorer, and Safari. We do work with other browsers, but it might not function completely properly and you could experience printing problems. So SPEDforms has a lot of different ways to make the system work individually for each district. And it's the district leadership that makes those decisions based on their needs and sets of preferences. They determine what forms we're using. They're determining sometimes which language we're, they're using. They're determining drop downs. They're determining templates. Make sure that you're following the district guidance. And we'll see this little checklist on a, on a few pages. This is just a reminder. Check with your district first. See what the district guidance is. Some SPED forms vocabulary. Plan manager. Sometimes people call it case manager. Some people call it IEP manager. All of those are the same in our world. It's the person who controls the student's records in SPED forms. A provider, on the other hand, is a person who has provides service to the student and they may have access to the student's records, but the plan manager is the person who controls the records. There's also what we call a SPED forms administrator. There are individuals in your district who oversee and manage SPED forms and those preferences that we talked about within your district. There are some individuals that are given read only access. So maybe people have the ability to look at the files, but they aren't able to work in the files and those would have read-only access. There are individuals, whether they be case managers and or providers who are able to view and work in a student's records, those people have edit access. The working copy, that's the form that you see on the computer screen. The copy of whatever form you're on that you are working on. The finalized copy is different. That's when you've completed a form, you've finished it, you've checked it, and now you finalize it. So it is made into a PDF. It's like printing it and giving it to the parent in a paper format. But then in this case, it's being made into a PDF and stored electronically in SPED forms history. Now you can go back, that working copy still exists. It doesn't go away. You can make changes to it, but the changes on the working copy don't change anything in that finalized copy because that was a PDF and it's stored in history. And the final vocabulary word is provider number. Every single one of us across the state of Minnesota has a unique identifier associated with the system with SPED forms. You don't see that printed on any form, but it's always working in the background. It tracks the total amount of time each person is responsible for students 
It alerts users of responsibility to conduct an assessment if you're using the assessment tracker. It tracks progress when completing those evaluations. It helps pull together numbers for how much time you're spending into reports. And so the provider number when asked for is very important. Again, it's not printed on a form, but it's used to calculate all of the work that you do. So that was SPEDFORM's basics. There will be more videos available for you, but we welcome you to SPEDFORM's 2.0.